hey guys, so your company has offered you a lump sum as an alternative to a monthly pension. What should you do? Which options should you take or consider? After considering some things, such as, is the pension single life, joint life? Will there be COLA adjustments? Do you have other assets, income streams? What are the tax ramifications? Is the company financially sound and solvent? It really boils down to a pretty simple question. What is the distribution yield on the lump sum? Distribution yield, it can be found by simply dividing the yearly pension amount by the lump sum. For example, if your yearly pension is $6,000 and the lump sum offered is $100,000, then the calculation would be 6,000 divided by 100,000, resulting in a yield of 6%. As a rule of thumb, if the yield is above 6%, take the pension. If below 6%, consider the lump sum. If taking the lump sum, it's important to figure what the internal rate of return is needed in order to match, or better yet, beat the distribution yield of the yearly pension payout. Let's jump over to the desktop to analyze this a little further using a time value of money calculator. OK, so we've uh, jumped onto the desktop. And I am currently on a website. It's called fncalculator.com. And we will be using their time value of money calculator located under the finance and investment heading. So let's go ahead and click on that. Brings us to the uh, TVM calculator page. Now what we're going to be doing is we will be using the numbers from the uh, previous portion of the video to determine what the internal rate of return is needed in order to make a, an accurate determination of whether or not to accept the lump sum or to go ahead and take the lifetime yearly annuity. So as you recall, the options that were given to us was a $100,000 lump sum or the $6,000 per year lifetime annuity. So in order to determine what the internal rate of return will be to to either match or better yet beat what the company can do we need to plug in some numbers so let's get started present value in the present value column we will enter one hundred thousand dollars that obviously equates to the lump sum that we would be given from the company and now we must invest this on our own and and hopefully get a return that can sustain us for our lifetime the payment, well, if the company was willing to pay us six hundred dollars, or excuse me, six thousand dollars a year, which is five hundred dollars a month, well, then I too am willing to pay myself five hundred dollars a month, six thousand dollars a year, right? We want to keep comparing apples to apples, so the five hundred dollar a month payment equates to six thousand dollars a year. Future value, future value, we put in as zero. Why? Well. At the end of our lifetime, ideally, we shouldn't have a bunch of money left over. And we shouldn't be a, a shortfall either, right? We, 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 we should be somewhere right next to zero. We've been drawn down on this money for our entire lives. If the math works out, ideally, there shouldn't be a whole lot left. So let's just call it zero. Zero is the future value. The annual percentage rate, we don't know. That's what we are trying to determine. And then the period. The period is found by looking at a, a lifetime expectancy table. Now, I'm pulling this one from the Social Security Administration. It's from 2016. But let's hypothetically say that this lump sum offer has been given to a male who is 55 years old. And according to Social Security, he will live another 25.52 years. Let's just call it 26, okay? So Social Security says, you know, you're 55 years old, you're healthy, you're going to live another 26 years. Great. So we come back to the calculator page. We need to enter that period in a monthly number. So let's jump onto a calculator real quick. 12 months times, what did we say, 26 years equals... 
312 months. So we're going to go 312 months into the period field. Okay, so let's recap. The present value, that's the $100,000 that the company is prepared to hand over to us if we walk away from the lifetime annuity. The payment, that $500 a month payment, we're still going to pay ourselves. We want that income stream, so that $500 a month equates to $6,000 a year. Future value is zero because ideally we don't want a bunch of money left over when we die. And then the period is 312. That equates to 26 years, which is what the life expectancy is for a male who is currently age 55, according to Social Security. And we click on the rate and look at this. According to our time value of money calculator, we need to earn 3.71% on this money in order to pay ourselves $500 a month for 26 years. That's doable. 3.71%, that's, that's pretty easy to do. Even, even if you're a conservative investor, that's pretty easy to do. I would be tempted in this case, given these numbers, to take the lump sum and invest that myself. Now let's try another example. Let's, let's say same yearly annuity, but in this case, they were only going to offer us, say, $60,000. Excuse me, $60,000 as a lump sum buyout. Payment was going to stay the same. The future value would still be zero. Our periods would still be the same, which was 312, which is 26 years. Let's see what we need to earn now in order to sustain that. Ah, oh, look at that. 9.404%. That's a little steep. Do you think you could earn 9.04% for 26 years to sustain yourself on this offer? Uh, I would say no. And this is where, when you run the distribution yield off the top of my head, that was uh, 6,000 divided by 60,000. That's what? 10%, right? Am I an idiot? But let's take a look. 6 divided by 60 equals 10%. So yeah, in that case, 10%. That's a ballpark estimate. You run the numbers and it comes out to 9%. Pretty close. In this case, I would definitely, definitely take the lifetime annuity. I don't want to be trying to earn 9% on my money for the rest of my life to sustain what the company is going to do risk-free. Now, I'm not a tax attorney. I'm not a CPA. I'm not a financial advisor. Although I did stay at a Holiday Inn Express last night. But no, this tool, this is an invaluable tool. If you have recently been offered a buyout, how do you know what is a good offer and what is a bad offer? Jump onto a time value of money calculator, and it'll tell you exactly what you need to know. So I hope this video has uh, helped you out and, and, and cleared some of the fog. I know when, when I was presented with an offer recently, I, I struggled. I, I kept going back and forth. You know, on one hand, you know, that lump sum, that's pretty tempting. But you need to look, you need to look at the internal rate of return, what you need to earn for the rest of your life to match that pension that the company is willing to give you virtually risk-free. So leave a comment below. Let me know what you think. Was this helpful? Let me know. I look forward to hearing from you.